For this video, I'll be working through question three of the 2018 level three waves exam. Question three. Um, Clara wants to investigate the properties of a 40 centimeter or 0.4 millimeter length of steel, solid steel rod. The bar is clamped rigidly, rigidly at the center and the ends are free to vibrate. The rod is struck in such a way is to produce a fundamental long, uh, is it fundamental longitudinal standing wave. So transver transverse is like you're tra traversing a mountain. Longitudinal goes like that. The wave travels like it's like a well, how do I describe? It? It's like a sound wave. It's a compression wave. The waves travel up and down the steel rod. Um, show that the wavelength of the wave is. 0.8 meters a diagram sh uh, should be included in your answer so let's just highlight some key words um, ends are free to vibrate but a boom but a boom anti nodes it's kind of given um, the bar is clamped rigidly at the center this is going to be a node um, right so I'll sketch it as neatly as I can um, oh man is that neat yeah, yeah, close enough. Um, and then I'm going to go from here. I'm going to draw this on radically so I can actually do it. Uh, mate, look at that. I should be an art teacher. Right, this is a node. I'm going to node that. This is a anti-node. I'm going to spell that correctly if I can. And this is an anti-node. Anti node, and really, we should put some arrows here like this. Um, this is a stupid question. This is a really, really stupid question. If you do this in reality, if you want to make because this is called singing rods, I'll put a video in the description on how to do it. I've actually like got some in the lab. Great fun, great fun. Um, you don't strike. You don't like. You don't strike the rod at all. You actually get a bit of pine rosin or like sticky stuff. Um, if you get a bit of like uh, like violin, the rosin that you use to like make the strings. What do you call it? Like rub on the strings of a violin or a cello. Look it up. Um, you crush that up into powder, and then you stick it on your fingers, and you actually you, you don't strike them at all. If you st like strike the rod, rod, you end up making transverse waves. Um, so yeah, that's like a side bit. Um, right. So we have the wavelength is equal to, what is it? Well, the length is equal to half a wavelength. So I'm going to just, uh, the length is equal to, that's quarter of a wavelength, that's another quarter of a wavelength, half a wavelength. In other words, the wavelength is equal to two times the length, um, which is equal to two times, what's the length? 0.8 meters. 0 0.8 equals 1.6 meters. What am I talking about? What? Show length, oh, what am I talking about? No, 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 the length is 0.4. Oh, I'm an idiot. 2 times 0 0.4 is equal to 0 0.8 meters. Right, it's a show question. If you didn't have this, you didn't get the answer. Um, was this a merit? I can't even remember. Anyway, was it a merit? I'll have to have a double check. Um, no, it was just achieved. You had to have, in fact, we were really lenient on this one. If you had this all that we gave you achieved, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, because this was kind of a stupid question. Anyway, next question. Uh, one, end, one end of the rod is attached to a diaphragm that can move freely inside a clear plastic, plastic tube. The clear plastic tube is closed at the opposite end. On the bottom of the clear plastic tube is a fine white powder. When the steel rod is struck, the white powder forms ridges that are half a wavelength apart. The steel rod still vibrates at the fundamental frequency. The frequency and the vibrations, uh, the frequency of the vibrations in the air and the tube is the same as the frequency of the vibrations in the steel rod. Explain why this is true for the frequency, but not for the wavelength. So pause it, write the answer, and then discuss. Right. So I've said the frequency is the same because the diaphragm is oscillating the air at the same frequency the steel rod is vibrating at. The frequency is in, in the air is caused by like the steel rod. So the steel rod's driving the oscillations inside the ear. Um, you could say that however you liked, as long as it was sort of grammatically-ish correct. Um, the wavelength is different as the speed of sound in solids is far higher than gases. You just sort of had to know that. I felt kind of bad because maybe some kids didn't. Um, or some kids certainly didn't. 
Um, so since f equals v over lambda, and both frequencies are the same, the velocity of the rod divided by the wavelength of the rod is equal to the velocity of the tube divided by the wavelength of the tube, because both frequencies are the same. Um, the wavelength of the tube must have to be very small for both the fractions to be equal, um, because... Is that true? That's really, really big. That's really, really small. This is whatever number that is. Um, I don't know if that's entirely true. I suppose it doesn't really even matter. You just sort of answer the question, not for the wavelength. The speeds are different. Once I get to the, if I see the speed of sound, I usually just stop marking because it's, yeah. Well, I don't stop marking. I read the rest, but that's correct. Um, anyway, by the way, this is called a Kunditz tube. It is spelled K U N D T S tube. You can make them using, uh, what are they called, a compression speaker? Compression speaker. You buy it off AliExpress. Um, they are like megaphones and stuff. Um, and you just hook them up to like a fizz bottle filled with styrofoam balls that you get from, uh, in fact, I've got one here because I'm halfway through making one. Those are, these are like the neck things you get on airplanes. They're filled with itty bit little styrofoam balls. I hope they are anyway before I rip this apart to find out because the ones I got from Spotlight are too small, uh, too big. Um, but anyway, you can make them yourself. Um, and I can't imagine this would ever work in reality. I can't imagine when you, like, this has got a singing rod, when you drive this, maybe you're using like powder or something. I don't know. That'd be hard to do though. Right. Clara measures the ridges to be very, very small apart, two times, uh, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2. So what is that? 2.3 centimeters? I don't know. Calculate the speed of sound on the rod. 0 .0 yeah, anyway. Um, right, so what are we going to do? We are going to go right, well, um, ridges are that far apart and so, hold on, lambda over 2 is equal to that far. 3 times 10 to the negative 2. Because they're that far apart, that's how far they're apart. In other words, lambda um, lambda is equal to 2 times 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2, which gives me 4.6 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Boom, you got achieved. Um, right, V tube is equal to 344 meters per second, negative one, um, because it's air, obviously. It's, I'm gonna write that, because whatever, it's air. No, of course it is. Ah, now I've done a little bit of, I did the algebra over here, but I should have done it over here. Um, v rod, I'm gonna write this. Uh, where will I put, I'll put this further, and I'll put it here. V rod is equal to V tube velocity of the tube divided by the wavelength of the tube. So I'm trying to find the speed of sound of the rod. Velocity in the tube divided by the wavelength in the tube um, times the wavelength in the rod, which is given to us over the page. So that is equal to 344, you don't have to put the numbers down because it's not a show question, divided by the wavelength in the tube is 4.6 times 10 to the negative 2 times wavelength in the rod over the page, still the fundamental frequency, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, um, and that is equal to 5982.6 meters per second, negative one, uh, and then you round down here, uh, what do I do? I'm right around it here, so it's 5980 meters per second, negative one, um, three SF, right, not many kids got this. Um, you had to sort of do the sniff test. If you well, if you got this side, you're probably going to get this side. A lot of people got this calculation question because it's fairly straightforward, but didn't get this. Arguably, this isn't part of the standard. This is like last year's stuff. Um, well, not last year. Uh, this is level two. Yeah, for year thirteens are watching this now. This will be level two um, questions where you've got um, so a similar. Oh, what's it? It's like a derivation of Snell's law without the signs in there. Um, any hooser. Right, the clamp stand is adjusted and the steel rod is struck in such a way as to produce a standing wave of the second harmonic in the rod. Explain this the effect this will have on the air inside this, the tube. So I'll pause it, write the video, and then uh, write the answer, and then discuss. 
Right, so the second harmonic has double the original frequency. Um, you just had to know that. Um, as the rod drives the oscillations in the tube, the tube will have double the frequency. It sounds really stupid and really obvious, but you need to say it because it's asking about what happens to the air inside the tube. So cover the frequency, cover the wavelength, cover the velocity. Um, that are three things that can happen in the tube. So as the velocity in the tube is constant, this decreases the wavelength, causing the ridges to move closer together. However, an open-closed tube cannot form a second harmonic as that implies a node at both ends. Here we go. Here you got. Uh, here's a node. There'll be a node here. I'm not going to. Wow. Oh, whatever. Node here, and there'll be an anti-node here. So that's quarter of a wavelength. Half a wavelength would imply there still has to be a node here. It'd be node, anti-node, node. Um, that's impossible. You, ca you can't form a second harmonic. And assuming this is uh, like, assuming this isn't just like fixed, fixed. It's kind of a weird setup. Um, but anyway, so cannot form a second harmonic as that implies a node at both ends so the tube likely won't resonate and the ridges will remain flat. You get the excellence if you get up to here. The rest of this stuff is just me having a sort of a rant about the question structure. If you just said it won't form a second, like the tube won't form a second harmonic, there won't be any sort of res resonance, nothing will happen to the air inside the tube, um, you didn't really get the mark unless you're really specific about what happens. Any who's a